Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm going to be talking about shaping light and shadows, kind of moving the light around and basically just trying to get an image to look the way you want the image to look, I guess. I mean, that's kind of what we're always doing here, right? So uh, I'm going to walk through a cityscape. In fact, here's the scene. And now this is something I love to shoot and something I shoot a lot when I travel, especially overseas, which is city streets in blue hour. I just love it. Uh, the thing is, like the light's not always in the right places, you know, the right places. And things don't always look the way I want them to look. And that's the beauty and the power of using software like Luminar Neo to go make those adjustments. Speaking of adjustments, I already used Develop Raw and Super Contrast. You can see that here in the Edits tab. Develop Raw, I fixed a little bit of distortion and moved the shadows around a little bit. And then I did one thing with Midtones Contrast there in Super Contrast. So let me show you. The photo started like that, and now it looks like that. So slightly different, slight changes in tone and all that, but otherwise, this is my raw canvas, so to speak, and I wanna go make a few adjustments. Now, the first thing I like to do is, after I've done a little bit of that light work, before I go shape everything, is play a little bit with the details. So I'm gonna get some Structure AI, and I'm just gonna go kind of general here, and I'm just gonna get a uh, linear gradient, and all I wanna do is just add a little of that structure across that part of the photo. So like maybe a 25 or something like that. And if you look at the before and the after, it's not a massive change, but just wanna add a little bit of extra kind of crunch. I always do that with my fist for some reason, but just wanna add a little bit of that crunch there just to get the photo kind of having a little more crunch, I guess. Uh, while I'm on the, uh, the, the part of the photo development process here before I really get into the true shaping of the light, I'm gonna do a tiny bit with color and that is that blue up there in the sky is just too much. So I'm gonna take the luminance down. So I'm gonna drop that make it a little bit darker and I'm gonna take the saturation down and just make it a little bit less blue. So, you know, maybe something about like that, but I wanna mask that in with a brush simply because there's also blue in that sign uh, around that store on the left-hand side and I don't wanna mess up those colors because I like that blue. I just wanna take it down over here in the sky because sometimes those blue hour skies, when it's just a plain and cloudless, they really are intensely blue looking in software here. You know, uh, they, just, they just look really blue, right? So I just wanna reduce that a little bit. So there it is before and after, slightly darker, so slightly less saturated. Easy for me to say, right? Uh, anyway, so that's my, that's my photo. And now what I wanna do is work on shaping the light. So. There's really five things I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna be honest, this is gonna be super repetitive, but that's okay. Um, I don't really care if what I do is repetitive, as long as it works, and this stuff works every time. And that is basically using the develop tool and some masking tools, or I should say, yeah, develop filter tool, and some masking tools to come in and just move things around. So the first thing I wanna do is get a linear gradient, and I'm just gonna bring that in. Actually, I'm gonna start on this left-hand side, uh, for me, what I wanna do is darken that area a little bit. It's really too bright, uh, but of course, there's those store lights. And so what I wanna show you here is I feather generally pretty pretty generously. And so I'm gonna feather something about like that. So if you don't know how this works, everything to the left of this first line is gonna get the full effect. From that first line to the middle line, it starts to reduce. It reduces further from the middle to the last line, and then over here, it gets nothing. So what I'm gonna do is just darken that exposure a little bit. But the cool thing is, in doing so, I'm kind of amplifying the way the light looks coming off those lights and how it falls on the floor. Sometimes you can add a little bit of contrast too, and that'll create a little bit more of that kind of depth and that darkness, and because it's contrast, it's the difference between the bright and the darks, so it kind of accentuates that. You may also come in and play with things like whites, so I can pop that a little bit more to make those lights kind of glow a little bit more and even pop the highlights a little bit if I want to. And if you look at the before, there it is before and the after, it's uh, quite a bit darker over there, but the areas that should not be dark, which is like underneath those lights and where the lights are hitting the, uh, the, the pavement or the sidewalk, those are not dark. So that works really well. I'm gonna close develop. I'm gonna open it again. I'm gonna get another mask, another linear gradient. And this is the repetitive part. I'm gonna do this a few times because this kind of photo really calls for it, but I'm gonna do this in the top of the photo now. So I'm gonna move this up here and you can stretch this out pretty far if you want to. And all I wanna do is just 
essentially slightly darken the top. And I think that's about where I want it to be. And I'm just gonna pull the exposure down slightly, just to create a little bit more of that shadow um, along the top of the photo. And I already darkened the sky some. If I did not do that, it would still be that brilliant blue and it would be brighter. So I did that as its own separate thing. And then I also darkened the entire top. So I think that looks pretty good. There it is before and after. And again, you may play with contrast here. You know, contrast can add a little bit more intensity, a little bit more depth. And I think that looks fine. So I'm gonna close it. I'm gonna open it again. I'm gonna get masking again. I'm gonna get another linear gradient. And I said, it's repetitive. So, you know, feel free to uh, just uh, yawn if, uh, if you're getting bored. Uh, but the end result, it really works for me. And so I just like to show how you can shape that light and uh, kind of the tones in an image using masks like this. So once again, a linear gradient on that right-hand side, and I'm kind of darkening it, maybe a little bit of contrast, something about like that. Boom, there it is before, there it is now. I think that looks great. Close that one more time with the linear gradient, and this time, of course, along the bottom. And I'm gonna fade that in, and I'm gonna fairly generous fade. It doesn't have to be a, a huge gradient zone, but I'm a big fan of gradient zones simply because it allows that transition to be smooth so you don't have an abrupt kind of light switch transition it's smooth and gradual and in other words it looks natural uh, because if you have a really condensed gradient zone it doesn't look natural at all so i'm gonna do something about like that notice i'm purposefully uh, fading it into this area here which is um, where that light falls because i want that light to continue to be uh, very prominent so i'm actually going to lower this a little bit and actually fade that a little higher something about like that and again i'm just going to drop the exposure and so you can see it's kind of accentuating the light there uh, under the store lights and along the concrete so i think that looks pretty good and if you look at the before and the after i think that's looking pretty good so once again close develop once again open develop develop is the best tool i use it all the time i use it repeatedly on just about every image because it has all this stuff here all of these different tools that you can use to really control your image and if you keep coming back with a mask and another mask and another mask, you can really target things and have a lot of control. I think it's fantastic. Now, this time I'm not gonna get a linear gradient because you're bored of that. I saw you yawning. Don't pretend, don't try to hide it. Um, I'm gonna get a radial gradient and I wanna come in here because I wanna accentuate this area where these uh, people are walking. Now this was a, a longer exposure, you know, half second or something like that. So they're kind of blurred out. But that's okay, I still wanna see them and I wanna see that area. So I'm gonna drag this out here. I'm definitely gonna invert because I'm working in the area that's the pink or red color. So invert, now I'm working just in that area. And then I usually take a couple of minutes and I size this up and I shape this up and I kinda of play around and I have a generous gradient zone, kinda of like I do here. And I just wanna make sure that I get it kinda of situated uh, about what looks like maybe about like that if you screw it up and you decide you can just go back and change it unfortunately you can't edit that mask you have to recreate it hopefully they'll adjust that in a future version of luminar but it's uh, it is what it is it's quick and easy to redo anyway so this time i'm going to lift the exposure because i want that to be a little bit brighter because you know the way i think of this is i think of the the eye of the viewer kind of going down that street and then kind of going over and seeing the rest of the scene uh, i don't know i shot this like Ooh, this is like 10 year old photo or something. So this, I don't know what I was thinking at the time other than woohoo, I'm in Amboise and in, in uh, the Loire Valley of France. I'm sure I said both of those words pretty horribly. If you're a French, my apologies, but um, I'm shaping the light here and I was excited to be out shooting. I could try contrast. I don't think I want any additional, con maybe a tiny bit, a little bit of contrast. I might actually bring the highlights up, maybe bring up the whites. A little bit you can see I'm just creating a little bit brighter area there but the other thing I want to do is actually cool it off a little bit so I'm gonna go a little bit left with the temperature I don't want to go too far and make it blue but I want to get a little bit away from some of those warm kind of golden tones and that's just a personal preference there's absolutely nothing wrong with them I just uh, I've shot cities like this and this kind of scene so many times over so many years that this whole look of the kind of the orangey uh, sometimes almost a green kind of orange look from those lights. It just kind of drives me nuts. I just kind of don't like it. So I'm going to blue to kind of get away from those warm tones. Again, personal preference. Uh, it doesn't really impact the overall look of the photo. It's just something I like. I might kick up a little bit of vibrance in there, 
but there's not a whole lot I need to do. I mostly just wanted to brighten that up because it is, a thing, I think, a focal point of the image. So one more time, there it is before, and there it is now. You can see that just looks a, a lot more clear, and it's like the light here is, of course, shining down on them and on this area. So I think that kind of makes sense and kind of accentuates uh, what's happening in the photo. Now, I'm also going to add a little bit of a vignette. So I'm going to pull these down a little bit. Now, I kind of already added a vignette because I basically darkened all four edges with linear gradients and the develop tool. And I already kind of brightened the center, which is kind of like inner light. And yet I'm going to add a vignette. I'm going to go round. I'm going to go feather all the way. And I'm going to do a tiny bit of inner light. And I'm just going to put the subject kind of over here, kind of lower and left of where these people are walking. It's just a little bit of a move there, but the vignette tool with inner light is fantastic for really helping to shape the light overall. But if you look at that before the vignette and with the vignette now, I think it looks good, honestly. I think it looks great. And I'm pretty happy with this photo. The only other thing I sometimes do is I'll get to the end of an edit and I'll get Accent AI and I'll give it just a little punch, like a 15 or a 20. I don't want to go too high because if you do high, I mean, it has a habit you know, habit. Um, it's designed really to brighten dark areas uh, without really blowing out areas that are already bright. So it's done a pretty good job of doing that. I just don't want to do that. I just spent the last 10 minutes or whatever talking about how I want to darken uh, and shape the light. So I don't want Accent AI to undo everything that I've done. I'm just going to do like a 15. And I've often done it uh, just across certain parts of the photo. In this case, um, you know what? I'm not. I was about to say I'm going to do it across the entire photo, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to get another radial gradient, and this time I'm going to go across this part of the photo and invert, and then I want to reshape this thing. So this is where experimentation comes in, and I'm kind of making this up on the fly, so I'm hoping it's going to look okay, but I think it will. Uh, I'm going to pull this down a little bit, and I'm going to pull this in a little bit. Kind of flatten that. Uh, I'm just kind of experimenting with the shape here and with the gradient. I think that's plenty. I'm going to do something about like that. So now I've got that 15 kind of hitting that center of the photo. Now I could do more because if you want to accentuate more light, it's great at that. Accent AI is really good at bringing that light up. You could do more and more and more. And it's almost like another version of inner light with, uh, with the vignette, except that it's doing some other things too. But I think, uh, I think I'll go to about 20, really, just to leave that there. But there it is before, and there it is after. And the other thing I like about that, it kind of brightens up this area. And what I imagine in my mind, and I don't remember because this was 10 years ago, is these people are walking up here, and then they're going to walk, and they're going to go over there and maybe look in this uh, cookie shop or whatever it is, bakery, or maybe walk by me to the left. I don't know. I'm kind of making things up here, but I do that a lot when I'm editing. I just think about what's happening in the scene. And that kind of informs my editing. So I think using Accent AI there with just the radial mask, and therefore just brightening that little bit, I think that kind of works and helps. Let me show you the overall photo, my friends, because I think we came a long way. There it is, rather dark there and dark in a lot of other places. The light, I mean, overall, um, it's not flat, but it's not really popping. But I think now the light really pops. And if you look at the sliding little window kind of thing, um, I think we've come a long way in kind of shaping that light. And that's what this video is really about, is just using tools, uh, masking tools specifically, to uh, with a develop, which is my favorite way to do it, and just really controlling the light and adjusting the light to kind of suit the mood. And so you're shaping light and tone and shadow and really setting the mood of the photograph by controlling your edits with masking. And that's really what I'm talking about here. I hope that makes sense. One more time, there it is before. And there's my final result, which I like quite a bit. And that's one of the reasons I love to shoot these kind of photos. Um, I just love the scenes, but I love all the natural lines. I love the architecture, but I also like the interplay of light and shadow and color. And we didn't really talk about color in this video. You know, surprise, because I talk about color a lot. But here, there's a fair amount of warm tones, and then there's a fair amount of blue tones, like in the sky and on the front of that shop. And I think the interplay of those warm and cool tones really complements the image, too. That was this video, my friends. Hope it uh, gives you some ideas about how to edit your own photos. Hey, thanks for hanging out. I appreciate it. I'll see you soon, and I'll be back soon with another video. You guys take care, and until then, adios.